The U.S. Chemical Safety Board issued a safety bulletin in January of 2006 warning acetylene producers of the dangers of allowing the violently explosive gas to accumulate in enclosed spaces. The bulletin cautions acetylene producers to maintain up-to-date procedures and checklists, train their personnel, and ensure that acetylene can only vent to safe locations. The CSB Safety Bulletin followed an investigation into the January 25, 2005 explosion at Acetylene Services Company, or ASCO, that killed three workers and gravely injured a fourth. The incident occurred at the company's plant in Perth Amboy, New Jersey. The accident at ASCO was a terrible tragedy. The force of the powerful explosion caused loss of life as well as extensive property damage. By understanding what happened, we hope we can prevent another such tragedy from occurring in the future. Several things went wrong that caused this accident. Our investigation found that the facility design allowed acetylene to be vented into an unsafe location, a wooden shed. On the day of the accident, an incorrect sequence of operations and the failure of a critical check valve led to an acetylene explosion. The CSB has prepared a computer animation to help visualize what happened at the acetylene plant. Acetylene was produced at the ASCO plant through the chemical reaction of calcium carbide with water in a vessel known as an acetylene generator. The gas then flowed through pipes to cylinders for distribution to customers. Water was fed to the acetylene generator from either the city supply or from outdoor tanks containing recycled water. There was normally enough water pressure to prevent any acetylene gas from flowing backward through the water pipes, where it might find an opening, creating a danger of explosion. The water line was also equipped with a check valve, a safety device intended to prevent the reverse flow of acetylene through the pipes. In normal operation, water flowed through the check valve into the generator. Should the water pressure fall, a plug in the check valve was supposed to block the flow of acetylene. The recycled water was supplied from several large outdoor tanks. The tanks were connected by wooden panels, forming a shed. A drain valve on the recycled water line discharged onto the ground inside the shed. On the night before the incident, this valve was left open to protect the water line from freezing. The next morning, the acetylene generator was started up using the city water supply. The CSB believes that operators later shut off the city supply, opened the valve to the recycled water line, but then, for some reason, delayed switching on the flow of recycled water. Without water pressure, acetylene began to flow backward from the generator. The check valve was the only remaining safeguard to prevent acetylene from reaching the open drain in the shed. But on the day of the accident, the check valve didn't work. The CSB later found that the design of the valve allowed the plug to become misaligned, allowing acetylene to flow back into the water pipe. The gas flowed back through the check valve through the recycled water line and out of the open drain valve into the shed. The concentration of acetylene built up to a dangerous level. The CSB believes the acetylene gas most likely ignited when it contacted the hot surface of a propane space heater at the far end of the shed. The result was a violent explosion at 10.36 a.m which pulverized the shed. The deadly blast wave struck the victims who were shoveling snow nearby. As you have seen, had up-to-date operating procedures been in place and followed, had the acetylene check valve been less susceptible to a critical failure mode, and had the facility been equipped with appropriate heating and electrical equipment, this accident would not have occurred. The CSB Safety Bulletin outlines a number of good safety practices for managing highly flammable gases like acetylene. Investigations Manager Steve Selk. When handling or manufacturing hazardous materials like acetylene, a high level of discipline should be applied. Keep operating procedures up to date. Provide operators with checklists to help them run the process consistently. Ensure that vessels and pipes that contain flammable materials are only vented to safe locations. Check for potential sources of ignition in areas where flammable materials might be released. 
Another thing that CSB recommends is that facilities broadly interpret codes that may be applicable to their operations. The National Fire Codes explain how low temperature heating, like steam, shall be used for locations that may contain acetylene. Finally, CSB cautions facilities about relying on check valves. Check valves can fail. Select a check valve that's appropriate to your application. In addition to those safe handling measures, the CSB issued three specific recommendations addressed to the companies involved and to OSHA. Board member Gary Vischer. The board recommended that ASCO implement an effective process safety management program, including written operating procedures and checklists, and ensure that its workers are trained and are following the procedures. The board recommended that Rexark Incorporated, the maker of the check valve, inform users about the incident and replace valves with others that will operate reliably. And finally, the board also recommended that the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, update its acetylene standard, which now contains certain obsolete provisions. In summary, we at the Chemical Safety Board believe that following these recommendations and the other measures discussed in this safety bulletin will prevent similar accidents from occurring in the future. The CSB Safety Bulletin on Flammable Gas Accumulation Dangers is available online at csb.gov.